Thank you, brother. Let's open our Bibles, please, this morning to John chapter 3. Back into our study. Had a few weeks off uh, due to some, uh, some of our men filled in and preached for us for a couple of weeks. We had Mother's Day last week. But we're back in John chapter 3. We're going to start out with this 16th verse reading again. We talked about that last time. The four greatest things in the world. The four greatest things that's ever taken place. It's found in these 25 greatest words that's ever been spoken here from John chapter 3 and verse 16. And we're going to read on down to about verse 21. For God so loved the world. By the way, you know you can put your name there. Why don't we just do that? Why don't we just read that first, that first phrase of that verse? Can we read that together? And when we get to the world, will you just say your name? Can you do that? Can you do that with me this morning? Let's do it together. For God so loved Scotty. Let's do that again. Say your name. For God so loved Scotty. And listen to what the Bible says. That He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent not His Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through Him might be saved. He that believeth on Him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already, because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. And this is the condemnation, that light is come into the world, and men love darkness rather than light, because their deeds were evil. For everyone that doeth evil hateth the light, neither cometh to the light, lest his deeds should be reproved. But he that doeth truth cometh to the light, that his deeds may be made manifest, that they are wrought in God. I want to ask you a question to begin the message this morning. I want to ask you this question. Are you afraid of the dark? Are you afraid of the dark? Let's pray. Our Father, again, I just love you this morning. I, I thank, Lord, about something we heard yesterday at the wild game dinner as one of our men prayed. And he said, Lord, all is vain unless your spirit comes down. And Father, that's so true today. Unless your spirit comes down, nothing I say, nothing I can do, no songs that are sung are going to make any eternal impact. It's not going to make a difference in anybody's life. But Father, I'm so consumed with the message this morning from Your Word. And I just pray, Lord, that You would just fill me. Help me to be plain in what I say. Lord, help me to just put myself out of the way and preach as a dying man to dying men. I can't do it without You. I thank You, Lord, for letting me preach. In Jesus' name, Amen. You know, when I, when I pray that prayer and thank the Lord for letting me preach, I just want you to understand something this morning. I mean that. It's an honor and a joy for me, 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 me to be a part of this church. It's an unbelievable blessing for me to be able to stand before you this morning and talk about God's Word. You know, I don't got to preach. I get to preach. I get to. You don't got to come to church. I hope it's not that way for you, but you get to. And that's such a blessing. We hadn't got to sing. We get to sing. And we were reminded of that so much yesterday. We had an awesome time. There were at our wild game dinner, Brother Kevin Ham from Gardendale First Baptist brought the message. There were at the end, either three or four young men stood up and received Jesus Christ as their Savior. Amen. And we just praise the Lord for that. As this uh, as we as we heard the message of God and as it spoke to our hearts, as it encouraged us. But I asked you a question a minute ago, and the question is, are you afraid of the dark? Are you afraid of the dark? I, I'll never forget. Most of you know, I was, ra I was raised just across the railroad tracks over there. And I never will forget the first time that I camped out in that vacant lot right over here besides Granny and Granddaddy's house. I never will forget that as long as I live. And it looked different then. There was hedgerow. There was trees all around it. And there, there, was, a, there was an old hedgerow in there. And, and I went out there. And of course, I didn't have no tent or no sleeping bag or nothing like that. 
Uh, but but I, I, I forget whether I had a tarp or, and, and took some blankets and, and I went out there and, and I was camping out all by myself. All by myself. And uh, you know, it was fun. Till it got dark. You know, I was in a place, y'all, that I had been all of my life. I had played a million ball games and some of you others in here, Boyd, some of you others in here, we played, we played in them too. So a million ball games right there in that lot. We had been there. We played there. Raised right there. But then it got dark. And I was by myself. And I want y'all to know something, folks. There was monsters in the dark. That dark became so scary. I never will forget. I never will forget. Sometimes, I thought it was the middle of the night. It was probably 7.30. I got up. From my, from my makeshift tent, and I eased over there, and I walked, and I went into the beauty shop. Now, a lot of you, who knows what the beauty shop is? Raise your hand. Some of you know what I'm talking about. I went into the beauty shop. If you don't know, I'll tell you later. Just come ask me, what in the world's the beauty shop? You said, somebody might have said, well, you, you sure need the beauty shop. <laughs> but I went into the beauty shop, and I slept in the beauty shop all night long. I'll never forget I was so scared. I was 32 years old at the time. But anyway, that doesn't matter. No, that's not true. But the rest of it is. Are we afraid of the dark? In John chapter 3, these first 21 verses, there's a conversation going on. And y'all, I really sincerely believe with all of my heart, this is probably one of the most important conversations that ever, take, ever took place in the Word of God, that the Holy Spirit of God ever recorded for us. It was a conversation between Jesus Christ and a ruler of the Jews named Nicodemus. And Nicodemus came to Jesus, and even though he, he, he approached Jesus kind of in a way, well, Jesus, we know that you're a, you're a great teacher, come from God. Jesus looked into the heart of Nicodemus. It reminded us of that at the very end of chapter 2, that Jesus knew what was in man, just like he knows what's in us. He knew what was in Nicodemus. And Jesus came to Nicodemus. Or as Nicodemus came to Jesus, they began to have this conversation, and Jesus told him, it's the most important words ever been spoken. He said, Nicodemus, you must be born again. In order to get to heaven, in order to have eternal life, you must be born again. And Jesus was talking about a spiritual birth. And He went on to explain that. That there was a spiritual birth, a rebirth that had to take place. That He was spiritually dead. We were born, if we're born once, we die twice. If we're born twice, we only have to go through death one time. And, and Nicodemus needed that spiritual birth just like we need that spiritual birth. To be made into a new creation. Any man be in Christ, the Bible says. He's a new creature, a new creation. All things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. And now in these last few verses, y'all, Jesus is winding down His conversation. And we talked last time again about the four greatest things in the world in John chapter 3 and verse 16. The greatest love, the greatest gift, the greatest invitation, and the greatest promise. And we talked about those things that the Lord has. And the Lord began to talk on to Nicodemus. Beginning in that 17th verse, listen to what Jesus told him. He said, For God sent not His Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through Him might be saved. I don't know about y'all, but I just want to stop and say, praise the Lord right there. That He sent, Jesus came into the world, not to condemn the world. We're going to talk about that in just a minute. Jesus didn't come into the world to condemn the world at that time or to judge the world at that time, but Jesus came so that the world... And remember what we said when we quoted John 3, 16 a while ago? For God so loved the world, that for God so loved Scotty, for God so loved Diane, for God so loved you that He gave His only begotten Son. And there's that world again. But that Scotty might be saved through Him. That my children might be saved through Him. That my grandchildren might be saved through Him. That's why He came, y'all. He came to save us. Listen to what Jesus said in verse 18. He that believeth on Him is not condemned. We'll come back to that. Listen to this next phrase, though. But... I want you to listen closely to what Jesus says here. 
But he that believeth not is condemned already. What does it mean to be lost? If you're here and you've never trusted Christ, if you've never been saved, then you need to understand what it means when we say somebody is lost. That's a good Bible word. Lost. Lost. What does that mean? Jesus says in this verse of Scripture that he that believeth not is condemned already. Jesus is telling us exactly what it means in this verse to be lost. And by the way, we as Christians, those of us who may have been saved for a long time, we need to be reminded of this again because we need to understand and remember and never forget the condition that those people who are without Christ are in. What does it mean to be lost? It means that we're under the sentence of condemnation. They, it says, but he that believeth not is condemned in the future. Is that what it says? It will be condemned at the final judgment. Is that what it says? No, what does it say? Already. Already. He that believeth not has already been sentenced. And already been found guilty. That means that there's been a sentence that's already been placed. We understand the court system. We read about it. We hear about it. And there's already been a sentence placed upon the life of every person born into this world. And that sentence is condemned. 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 That's what it means to be. What is the word condemned? It means the judgment has already been passed. It means, folks, that a person who is lost... That a person who is lost, the sentence has already been placed upon their life. They are hell bound. I don't say that proud. I don't say that glad. And I've told you this before. I've heard preachers preach that almost preach like they're glad people are going to hell. Lord, help us. It ought to break our heart. It ought to burn within us. There are people who are still under their condemnation of sin. They're already hell. Listen, if you've never been saved this morning, can I tell you something out of love? You, the sentence has already been placed on your life. And if you've never trusted Christ, you're, de you're destined, unless something happens in your life, you're destined to go to an eternal place of punishment called hell. You say, well, what? Right. Does God have to send me to hell? Who does He think He is? That upon my life is already past the condemnation of hell. What right does God have? Look at the end of that verse. He that believeth not is condemned already. Why? Because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. I've, I've told this a lot of times, shared this a bunch of times. But folks, if you've never trusted Christ, you don't think God's got a right to pass judgment on your life. By the way, He's Creator. He's all-powerful. I'll be talking, please come back tonight. I'm going to be talking about the fear of God tonight. I'm going to be dealing with some current issues tonight that our country is dealing with right now. And I want you to come back tonight. I want you to hear what God has laid on my heart about that. But what more do you want God to do to save you? He sent His only begotten Son who had been in heaven with Him for eternity to come. And even though when, when Jesus was speaking these words, He was looking into the future to that time and place where He was going to the cross to pay the price for the sins of mankind. To pay the, the, the debt that I couldn't pay and that you can never pay. You can never be good enough. You can never join enough churches. You can never be baptized enough. You can never give enough money. You can never live a good enough life. It's never going to work. We all know that. Because the, reason, the, right, the, the reason that people go to hell is because they have rejected the Savior. The reason they go to hell is because they've looked at the cross and they said, I don't want none of that. The reason they went to hell, I, they say they, they go to hell is because they look at what God did and the greatest gift that's ever been given and the greatest love that's ever been shown. And they say, I don't care that Jesus died. I'm going to live my life. I'm going to do my own thing. And I want you to know that a person like that is walking in the darkness of lostness.